Good night of Shabbos, Parshas Boy. Shabbos before Yud Shvat, the yard site of the Friedrich Rebbe, and the day when our Rebbe became the seventh Nasi of Chabad Lubavitch. The Rebbe explained once that Messias leadership doesn't begin a year after the passing of the Tzaddik, but it begins at the very moment when the Tzaddik passes away, the next Tzaddik, the Memale Mokim, who fills his place in every detail, it happens right away. So really, the Rebbe became the, our Rebbe in 1950, not 1951. But the world accepts it as 1951. So it's 72 or 73 years from then, and it's time to reflect a little bit, but uh, before reflection, just some historical notes. The Rebbe wasn't looking to be a Rebbe of Lubavitch Chassidim. He was quite happy doing what he was doing, working for the Merkis, for his father-in-law, having a job at the Brooklyn Navy Yard as an engineer. He shunned publicity he was rather a private person together with his wife, Rebbe Sanchaya Mushka. They didn't want to be in the limelight. During the 1940s, the Rebbe came in 1941, June, I believe, of 1941. And all those years, people slowly got to know him. To know him in the sense that he was a, a massive Talmud Chochem, a great Torah, Torah scholar a quiet person, a very thoughtful individual, and a warm person. And this was seen at the various fabrengans that he led in the 1940s, Shabbos Mavorchim, he was instructed by his father-in-law to fabreng. And some were even documented. And in speaking to some of these Hasidim from the 1940s, they said the same thing that he was someone who wasn't looking for covet, for honor, being the, the, the son-in-law of the previous Rebbe. He wanted to make his own living. He didn't want to live off the community. And he did make his own living. He went to work. But when the Friedrich Rebbe became sick, became ill, and as the illness became more difficult and his speaking abilities became more difficult. Slowly, it grew on a select group of older Hasidim and the young 770 Bukhar, the students. And this is what I want to focus on, that really it was those young Yeshiva Bukharim, young, th those 770 Bukharim, who took the lead in pushing the Rebbe the younger son-in-law to become the Rebbe rather than the older son-in-law. Nothing wrong with the older son-in-law, Rabbi Shmaryo Garari the Rashag, who was a, a man in his own right and accomplished, and he, he, he led 14 yeshivas, the 14 Lubavitch yeshivas in the 1940s that were achit mimim in the Arya Soda throughout greater eastern United States. He was in charge, and uh, someone who they say knew 300 my Morim, and he learned in Lubavitch, and he came from the Garari's lineage. It's all true. But the, the Yeshiva Bacharim, the 770 Hevra, the boys, they realized that this is the man, the Rebbe is the man to be the next Rebbe. How do you, how do you deal with it when you have an older son-in-law? And uh, some of them shared, you know, a story here, a story there, and putting it all together, it's clear that it was the Rebbe's, you know, in and friendship and scholarship that he had with the young Hevra that gave them the willingness to, and, and, and the and insight that this is the person. And indeed, I'll give you, a, for example, a story. There was a chassan in Baltimore, of Avram Elia Axelrad. He learned the Lubavitch. He came from Geza Chabad, Hasidim, Bedeiri Deiris. And Rabbi Avram Elia was himself a, uh, a, a Talmud Chochem and an Oivid and was an accomplished person. 
Rabbi Avigdor Miller was a student of his. Rabbi Avigdor Miller would say, I have to thank Rabbi Axelrad de Lubavitcher for teaching me Gemara before he went off to Slabotka and he became later Rabbi Miller, who did so much for Yiddishkeit, for Torah. So, Moshe Groner, Rabbi Moshe Groner, Label Groner's um, brother, told me himself that he, I forget who else, maybe it was Bumgarten, I forget who, were in Baltimore, America Schliches in either 49 or 50, that one of those years, and or 51, in the very first years, 51, I, I forget, one of the summers, and they, and they were encouraging Rabbi Axelrod to kind of vote for the Rebbe, because in the summer of 1950 is when, you know, things became uh, more formal, and uh, I believe there was a, a very famous meeting in that summer of 1950, in which uh, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, you know, put his head, you know, said, what do you want from me? I heard this from someone who, in Florida, just a few months ago, who was a, a, buch, a young buck of 12 to 15 years old. He remembers he was at the meeting in 770. And uh, he says, I remember when they pressured him, and the Rebbe says, Was vilti for mirhaben. What do you want from me? And he put his head down. So Moshe Grona was telling me how they indirectly, you know, told Rabbi Axelrod about the Rebbe's, you know, godless and learning and you know, Shemayim and an Avoida and that he's a friendly person, you know, not standoffish and all of that. So there was that you know, pressure that the Bacharim put on the El Terech Hasidim, those that were wobbling and decide, you know, who should be Rebbe. Although most of them sided with the Rebbe, but nevertheless, it was an issue. There's a, a settle I printed it in one of my books, I believe in the book called Rashag and the Rebbe, which if you haven't read, you should. There's a lot more there about this whole subject. So, the the Rebbe writes to someone, he says, it looks like this someone, I think it was Tereb Shloy Mechaim, I think it was Tereb Shloy Mechaim Kesselman. And the Rebbe writes that um, it seems like Tereb Shloy Mechaim had written that he should formally accept the leadership of Lubavitch as the Rebbe. So the Rebbe says, I can't do this now because of, you know, obvious issues that would involve, you know, machlekes, if, if arguments and divisiveness, if, if I were to announce that and do that. So, so, and we have that uh, actual Ksav Yad, that, that handwriting of the Rebbe saying this. What does this point to? This points to that Dvarim Shebet things that are quiet, unobtrusive, modest, that's where Kedusha is found. That's where holiness is found. You want to know who is the Rebbe? Look in that place. And the Bacharim and the older Chassidim, they say by Chassidim, they have a good sense of smell. They smelled out, ah, in this Tzina, in this Bahaltimish, in this, you know, hidden, quiet place, there is the secret. Rabbi Isai, it's 72 73 years later, we celebrate Yud Shvat this coming Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday. We get Naliyah this Shabbos. We light the, the Licht, the Yorzeit, for the Friedrich Rebbe. We go to the oil, or we send a letter to the oil. We tell our family about the Friedrich Rebbe and his Abbas Yisrael, etc., and what the Rebbe did to continue that legacy and that reality. But remember, you want, you want to find Elikus, godliness, you want to find Rebbe, you want to find Chassidus, you want to find Chabad, look to the place where there is modesty. And really it's a chapter Vav and Tanya, Perik Vav and Tanya, the Alter Rebbe says, what's Kedusha? Bittl. So may Hashem help us as we prepare from today through Tuesday, going into Wednesday, that we prepare ourselves with bitl humility, and we talk and learn the Bosi Legani, the, the original Mimer, the Rebbe's Mimer, the Tavshin Chav Gimel 1963 Mimer, the 1983 Mimer, 
Learn whatever you can. Learn an ois, learn a paragraph, learn the whole mimer. Sit together and make a fabrengin. And, and, and the ikir, ho ikir is that it's happening today. Not that it happened 73 years ago, 50 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, one year ago. It's happening now. What's reality? Your consciousness. Your way of thinking, your perception. That's your reality. If your perception is that the Rebbe continues with full force and potency to lead Lubavitch and to lead us and is bringing us closer day by day to Mashiach's coming, that's the way it is. And if you have chalishus, chas v'shalom, you have doubts, or like we would say in yeshiva, rifayon, you know, rifayon, you know, oh, I'm slipping, I have doubts, maybe, you need chizuk. Come to a say l'chayim, sing the Talk to a mashpia, talk to a friend, talk to your husband, talk to your wife, talk to your kids. Talk to your counselor even. Zayt gesund, zayt freilach, a good nerv Shabbos. She be zeichet of the kids and an sheikh ni offer, the Friede Rebbe, the Rebbe, and will be zeichet to be as Mashiach, to Kainu Shalai, Merkadish, Mherbi, Menu. Amen.